The world is a single whole reality, but it is first given to us split apart into perception and thought. Our first impressions of the world do not reveal its true nature. The world of appearance is a perceptual illusion. The appearance of this illusion will depend on the organization of each one's individual nature. It is each person's task to combine thought with the observed world to reach the true nature of the world. We are dissatisfied with the dualistic appearance of the world, but we never lose the feeling that the universe is a unity embracing both self and world. This feeling makes us strive to bridge the separation. The history of our spiritual and intellectual life is a continuing search for the unity between our self and the world. Religion, art, and science all pursue the same goal of restoring the unity of the world. The religious believer is dissatisfied with the world of mere appearance. He seeks the solution to the world problem that his self presents him with in the revelations granted him by God. But a one-sided faith in a religion of revelation leads to a dogma of revelation. Then true knowledge cannot be gained, only faith in someone or something. The artist seeks to incorporate the ideas of his self into his material to reconcile the spirit that lives within him with the outer world. He also feels dissatisfied with the world of appearance and seeks to mold into it that something more that is self transcending the world of appearance contains. The artist, using feeling and sensitivity to create, may become absorbed in a one-sided expression of feelings without worrying about the causes that drive it. The artist cannot gain true knowledge with feelings alone. Without thinking, the artist cannot know the scope and justification of his work. The scientist seeks the laws of phenomena, striving to penetrate with thinking what he learns through observation. He may believe that one should stick merely to one-sided experience and only observe, describe, and systematically order things. This leads to a dogma of experience that cannot discover important factors that are not yet given within direct observation. Only when we have made the world content into our thought content do we find again the unity from which we have separated ourselves. We will see later this goal can only be reached when the task of scientific research is understood on a deeper level than is usually the case. True knowledge will give us the unity from which we have separated ourselves when we draw thought from the inner core of the observed world. The relationship I have described here between the self and the world is found historically in two contrasting world conceptions, the one-world theory called monism and the two-world theory of dualism. Dualism directs its attention only to the separation between self and world, brought about by human consciousness. All its efforts are a futile struggle to reconcile opposing sides. The dualist feels that there must be a bridge between the two worlds, but is incapable of finding it. True knowledge reconciles the opposing sides by finding a higher unity. Monism has not done any better to overcome our separation from the world. Monism directs its attention only to the unity and tries either to deny or gloss over any differences actually present. It has tried to solve the problem in three different ways. 
Some monists deny mind and become materialist. Others deny matter, seeking salvation as spiritualists. Yet others claim that mind and matter are indivisibly united. Neither monism or dualism can satisfy our desire for knowledge because they do not do justice to the facts. We will see later that true knowledge requires the deepening of the powers of intuition if we are to gain insight into the innermost core of the world.